What you see here is a statement called Monge's theorem. Suppose we have three circles, such that no two circles have the same radius, and they are all external to one another. Take each pair of circles, and construct the two outer common tangent lines to the two circles. For these two circles, they intersect here. For these two circles, they intersect here. And for these two circles, they intersect here. We need to prove that these three blue intersection points lie on a straight line. I'm going to give you two proofs, one of which is quite extraordinary. Here is first the more ordinary one. Suppose this and this are the centers of these two circles. Then, if we take the angle bisector of this angle here, it would pass through both centers, because we have a tangent line here and tangent line here. Similarly, this point and this center of this circle lie on the angle bisector of this angle here, as denoted on the picture, and this point and this point lie on the angle bisector of this angle here. Let's call the centers of the circles A, B, and C, and let's call the intersection points of the outer common tangent lines by D, E, and F. Let the radius of this circle be r1, the radius of this circle r2, and the radius of this circle r3. We know that if we take the point of tangency here and the point of tangency here, then this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is also 90 degrees. Then we can apply the intercept theorem for this triangle because we have that this line is parallel to this line. And therefore, we know that AD divided by DB equals r1 divided by r2. Similarly, we can apply the intercept theorem for this triangle here, where since this angle is 90 degrees and this angle here is 90 degrees at the tangent point, then this line and this line are parallel, and therefore BF divided by FC equals R2 divided by R3. And similarly, we get that CE divided by EA equals R3 divided by R1. Hence, we get these three equalities. And now we can multiply these equalities so that R3 cancels out, R1 cancels out, and R2 cancels out. And hence, we get that AD divided by DB times BF divided by FC times CE divided by EA equals 1. But this is exactly the statement we get from Menelaus' theorem applied for triangle ABC and the points D, E, and F, each one lying on one of the sides or the extension of one of the sides of the triangle. And therefore, F, E, and D lie on a straight line by Menelaus' theorem, since we have that this equality holds. Here's the more unconventional way to solve the problem. Suppose that these three circles are actually three spheres, and that the plane we're working on cuts right through the centers of these spheres. So you can imagine that this circle is kind of like the diameter of the sphere that it represents. Or in other words, this is the equator of the sphere that this circle represents. Now imagine the cone that is tangent to both this sphere and this sphere at the same time. And then this must be the vertex of the cone. Here's how the cones might look like. And now imagine that we take a second plane and we put it right on top of the three spheres, such that it's tangent to all three spheres from above. Then this plane must touch, for example, this cone at a straight line. And this line belongs to the cone and it passes through this point. Therefore, this point lies on the plane that touches all three spheres. And similarly, this point and this point also lie on this plane. Hence, this line defines the intersection line of the plane we're working with and the one we put on top of the three spheres. And since the intersection of two planes is a line, then these three points must lie on a straight line. This here is the other variant of Morge's theorem. In it, we take the two common outer tangent lines of only one pair of circles, so this circle and this circle, we intersect them here, and for the other two pairs, we take the two common inner tangent lines of the two circles, so here and here, and they intersect at this point and this point. And we need to, again, to prove that this point, this point, and this point lie on a straight line. Here, we can proceed in the same way. First, notice that the angle bisector of this angle is this line, which passes through this center of this circle and this center of this circle. The angle bisector of this angle passes through the center of this circle here and the center of this circle here, and the angle bisector of this angle passes through this center and this center as well. And therefore, we can apply Menelaus' theorem to this triangle, and hence we only need to prove that this divided by this times this divided by this times this divided by this equals 1. Now we can use the intercept theorem for this segment parallel to this segment, 
and get that r1 divided by r2 equals this divided by this. Similarly, the intercept theorem can be applied for this segment parallel to this segment. So this triangle is similar to this triangle. And so r2 divided by r3 equals this divided by this. And similarly, the intercept theorem helps us find that r1 divided by r3 equals this divided by this. And so this divided by this, which is r1 divided by r2, times this divided by this, which is r2 divided by r3, times this divided by this, which is r3 divided by r1, equals 1. You can see how in this expression r1 cancels out, r2 cancels out, and r3 also cancels out. And therefore, this divided by this times this divided by this times this divided by this equals 1. And so Menelaus' theorem gives us the desired result. We also have a solution with spheres. This time, the difference is that the second plane is not directly above all three spheres, but it's only above this sphere and this sphere, and below this sphere. So it kind of passes in between these two spheres and this sphere. Then this new plane would pass through this point, this point, and this point. And hence, these three points lie on both planes. But the intersection of two planes is a line, and therefore the three points lie on a line. Now let's try to generalize Monge's theorem. What I'm going to define here is the external center of homotity for these two circles. What does that mean? It means that there exists a homotity centered here that sends one circle to the other. For example, if the homotity sends this point here, then it also sends this point here. And hence, it takes this circle to this circle. Here's an illustration of how that works. We saw that scaling the picture with the right amount, keeping this point constant, takes the small circle to the large circle. Note that the centers of both circles lie on the angle bisector of this angle. Also notice that if this radius here is r1, this radius is r2, this point is o1, o2, and this point is x, then x01 divided by x02 equals r1 divided by r2 from the intercept theorem. The goal is to define x by not using the two outer common tangent lines of the two circles, because for some pairs of circles, these tangent lines do not exist. And this equality gives us the perfect way to define x. Suppose we have two circles such that one lies strictly inside the other, and hence we can't really construct the two outer common tangent lines. But we can construct x, the point from which a homotity centered at x sends this circle to this circle. And we do it like that. We put it on the line O1, O2, such that the ratio x01 divided by x02 equals the ratio R1 divided by R2 as given here. Then, this point x would not only be the center of homotity that sends this circle to this circle, but it would also satisfy Monge's theorem. We can use this point x instead of the two outer common tangent lines of the two circles when such do not exist. And as you saw, the proof of Monge's theorem only uses the ratio x01 divided by x02, which is the same in both cases. So, the proof also works for this point x. And now, why does a homotity centered at x sends this circle to this circle? Well, it surely sends O2 to O1 when we take the coefficient of homotity b r1 divided by r2, because x01 divided by x02 equals r1 divided by r2. And hence, one of the centers goes to the other center. And then because all lengths get scaled by r1 divided by r2, then this small circle turns into a circle that has a radius of r2 times r1 divided by r2. So the new circle has a radius r1. The new circle has the same center as this circle and the same radius. So it's the same circle. Therefore, this one goes to this one under homotity with center x and coefficient r1 divided by r2. We can make the analogous arguments for this point being a center of homotity that sends this circle to this circle. We call it the internal center of homotity. The homotity itself has a negative coefficient, which means that this circle becomes smaller, 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 gets to zero, and then it starts having negative radius on this side until it turns into the circle. See, we have that O1 and O2, the two centers, lie on the angle bisector of this angle, and when we do the homotity centered at x, we send this tangency point to this tangency point, and this tangency point to this tangency point, and we send this circle to this circle, we send O2 to O1. The coefficient of homotity would be negative the resulting radius R1 divided by the initial radius R2. The coefficient is negative because we not only rescale all the segments by a factor of R1 divided by R2, but we also change the orientation of all segments. So if we take, for example, this radius, the orientation to be from this point to this point, 
Then what this point goes here and this point goes here, the orientation of this new segment would be reversed from here to here. It's as if this segment got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, became like a point, and then got larger, 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 and then came here. And at this point x, it reversed its orientation. Now because the coefficient of homotopy is negative r1 divided by r2, it follows that x01, which is the image of x02, the ratio of x01 divided by x02 equals r1 divided by r2. Or you can get this thing from the intercept theorem also, for this line parallel to this line. And this equality allows us to define an internal center of homotopy for circles that don't have common inner tangent lines. We just take the point x to lie on the segment O1, O2, such that O1x divided by O2x equals R1 divided by R2. In this way, when we apply a homotopy centered at x with coefficient negative R1 divided by R2, then O2 is gonna go to O1, because this ratio O2x divided by O1x is R2 divided by R1. Furthermore, the radius of the image of this circle is R2 times R1 divided by R2, or R1. And so the new circle has this center and this radius. So it coincides with this circle, meaning that this circle goes to this circle when we apply commodity centered at x, this point, with coefficient negative R1 divided by R2. And similarly as before, we can use the point x in Monge's theorem, in the second variant of Monge's theorem, when the two inner common tangent lines do not exist. You may have noticed that there is one scenario in which these arguments don't work, and this is when the two circles have the same center. In conclusion, for these two circles, one of which lies inside of the other, we can find two centers of homotopy, one external and one internal, and both would transform this circle to this circle if we take the right coefficient. So if the two centers are O1 and O2 and the radii are R1 and R2, then we can take Xi and Xe, the internal center of commodity and the external center of commodity, to lie on the line O1, O2, such that Xi lies on the segment O1, O2, and is such that O1 Xi divided by Xi O2 equals R1 divided by R2, and Xe is such that O1 Xe divided by O2 Xe equals R1 divided by R2. Here's the optional problem. We have a large circle and three small circles that are tangent to the large circle at this point, this point, and this point respectively. And then we take this common external tangent line to this circle and this circle, this common external tangent line, and this common external tangent line. We intersect these three lines at these three points, and then we connect like this, like this, and like this. We need to prove that these three lines intersect at one point. And here's the solution. The key to the solution is to construct the in circle of this triangle here, this circle. Now note that this point is the external center of homotopy for this circle and this circle. This point here is the internal center of homotopy for this circle and this circle. Therefore, this is the Monch line for this circle, this circle, and this circle. And hence, this line would pass through the internal center of homotopy of this circle and this circle. Similarly, by Monge's theorem, we know that this line must pass through the internal center of homotopy of this circle and this circle, because this here is the internal center of homotopy of this circle and this circle, and this here is the external center of homotopy of this circle and this circle. Hence, this is the Monge line for this circle, this circle, and this circle, meaning that this line passes through the internal center of homotopy of this circle and this circle. Similarly, this line also passes through the internal center of homotopy of this circle and in this circle, and hence the three dashed line all intersect at this internal center of homotopy of this circle and this circle.